Stereotype threat is when people feel that they're at risk of conforming to stereotypes about their social group. Stereotype threat can reduce the performance of those belonging to negatively stereotyped groups. If those belonging to negatively stereotyped groups are confronted with stereotypes associated with their group, it's likely that they will become anxious about what they're doing, which then may affect their ability to perform well in a task. In 1955, Steele and Aronson conducted what's considered the now classic study demonstrating the effect of stereotype threat on people's intellectual performance. Steele and Aronson tested black and white American participants on a test that is similar to the Scholastic Aptitude Test, which is a standardised test widely used in the USA for admitting students into college. The black and white participants were split in half. Half of the black and white participants were assigned to the diagnostic group, where the experimenter informed them that the purpose of the study was to examine the individual factors relating to how people perform on problems requiring reading and verbal reasoning abilities. One of the stereotypes that some people had about black Americans was that they were not able to do well in verbal reasoning tasks. Explicitly informing the black participants that the test was set out to test their verbal abilities reminded them of the racial stereotype associated with their group. The other half of the participants were assigned to the non-diagnostic group where the experimenter didn't mention anything about examining the individual's verbal abilities. Instead, they informed the participants that the purpose of the study was to examine psychological factors involved in solving verbal reasoning problems. Participants then completed a test. Here on the y-axis, we have the number of items solved on the test. On the x-axis, we have the two groups of participants and the blue indicates the diagnostic test condition and the green the non-diagnostic test condition. The results show that informing white participants that the test was designed to test their verbal skills did not affect their performance on the test. However, the black participants who were reminded of the stereotype did not perform as well as the black participants who were not reminded of this information. And their performance was worse than the white participants who were either informed or not informed about the same information. In addition, the results showed that the black participants who were reminded of the stereotype completed fewer test items than those from any other group. Reminding the black participants of a racial stereotype associated with their group impaired the rate as well as the accuracy of their performance. Steele and Aronson concluded that this impairment was caused by both the pressure and anxiety that develops after minority group members are informed about stereotypes associated with their group. Research has shown that the effect of stereotype threat is seen across a whole range of contexts. For example, with maths, if women are told that there's a gender difference in how well men and women perform on a math test, with men typically doing better than women, when actually given the test, women generally perform worse compared to when they're not told this information. So, depending on what people think the outcome is going to be, they create a reality through their performance. In 2008, Nietzsche Young and Courtney von Hippel conducted a study with female drivers. Now, how many people have heard the stereotype that women are not so great at driving? You might wonder where that stereotype came from. In fact, women generally pay less on their insurance for cars because they have fewer accidents and yet the stereotype is that they can't drive as well as men can. In their study, Young and von Hippel recruited 88 female participants to take part in a driving simulation study. The participants were randomly assigned to either the stereotype threat group where they were made aware of the stereotype about men being better drivers than women or the control group where they were not informed about this information. The participants drove for approximately nine kilometres on a rural two-lane highway in a driving simulator without any intersections. Along the highway, participants regularly saw road signs that indicated the speed limit of 80 kilometres an hour. They made a number of turns, but the road was pretty uneventful until the last stretch, where a group of pedestrians suddenly appeared, crossing the road. This meant that the participants needed to quickly put on the brakes to stop the car and avoid hitting the group of pedestrians. The question here was which group of drivers were more likely to hit the pedestrians? The results from Young and von Hippel's study showed that the female participants who were informed about the stereotype that men were better drivers than women were more than twice as likely to hit the pedestrians compared to those who were not informed of this information. 
Speed had absolutely nothing to do with it, as participants from both groups drove at similar speeds. After participants completed the driving simulation, they completed a questionnaire that asked them about their motivation to do well in the driving simulation. The results from the questionnaire showed that the female participants from the stereotype threat group were actually more motivated to show that women are good drivers compared to those in the control group. In a second study, Young and von Hippel included a divided attention task that was played through an audio recording while the participants completed the driving simulations. They found no effective stereotype threat for the female participants who completed the auditory divided attention task while driving. Interestingly, participants from the divided attention group were just as likely to hit the pedestrians as those with full attention while driving and informed about the stereotype that men are better drivers than women. These results seem to suggest that stereotype threat increases the likelihood for people to hit pedestrians because they're distracted by their concerns of being stereotyped.